Hello, I'm Sly and welcome back to our second channel geography video. This is Evan Stark series where I talk about geography and the world and stuff. And today I want to talk about borders again because I find them fascinating living on an island and a lot of you do too based on the reaction to the German borders and the Norwegian border video. So I figured why not try and take on some of the most challenging and perhaps I guess notion changing borders that do exist in Europe and that and perhaps in the world and that is going to involve Poland. So Poland is really fascinating because the Polish, uh, you know, history has hundreds and hundreds of years to it. You know, you can follow it back all all of that time and even at one point the Polish Empire was the largest one in Europe but because of their you know location being one on the northern European plain which is very flat leads very little natural borders and easy places to like kind of end that and two their placement amongst like you know being in the center of many many other empires uh, their, their borders change non-stop and in fact every single one of their borders they border seven separate countries every one of those borders has been changed at some point in the last 80 years and even as recently as 2002 Poland and Slovakia actually redrew their border again uh, only for like you know an extra three kilometers but still their borders are changing constantly and that is something which to me is just a fascinating concept about a country again the town I live in has been uh, you know English for the past like you know as long as it's existed I believe uh, however in Poland you know as recently as like you know the last 60 70 years uh, your town might have changed from one uh, uh, country to another unless you live in the very very center and uh, to kind of sh show this off the best by the way uh, here is the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth one of the most famous forms of Poland that you know has existed that you've probably heard of uh, it actually didn't cover all of modern day Poland, but it did cover all of Belarus, all of Latvia, Lithuania, and most of Ukraine, a decent part of Russia and even Estonia. Basically, my point here is that Poland has changed a lot. Here's another fun map to show that. Yellow to red being, you know, shortest to longest. This is how many, and the numbers are how many years that Poland owned that piece of territory. As you can see, there's so many different segments with so many different numbers. Uh, the Polish territory has changed so much over time, and I wanted to talk about why, how, and their current date borders in today's video. So, oh, by the way, actually one more thing before I say, like, you know, what, what's the reason for them changing so much. Uh, here's one of my favorite maps because black is Poland and red is countries that have invaded Poland. So yeah, it's not like Poland just likes changing their borders. They have a, a hard time in Europe when it comes to just other countries wanting to take some of their stuff, it seems. Again, look how many that is. That is absurd, right? So yeah, well, that's it. Let's get straight into talking about Poland and the Polish uh, border. So we're going to start, we're going to go counterclockwise around here because... Um, I think uh, the, uh, again, I like it like a backwards clock, uh, because I wanted to, uh, first of all, talk about the German-Polish border. I spoke about this in the Germany video, but I wanted to kind of expand on those thoughts a bit more, and also re-explain for anyone who doesn't know. Uh, but basically, the German-Polish border was redrawn, again, after World War II, uh, by uh, the Soviets, and uh, there's there used to be some controversy, and still is, in some parts of East Germany, about where the re uh, border was redrawn, because Germany used to expand far, far into, uh, you know, modern-day Poland, uh, you know, even as recently as 1930. Here's what a map looked like. You can spot how one, you know, Germany goes way further west and Poland, you know, is way further west too. But also you spot that Poland contains a lot of, you know, territory, which isn't part of them anymore. It now belongs to other things, which again, something I find fascinating, uh, just how different things can be. And the basic reason for that is because over the past, like, millennium or so, uh, you know, like, Germans slowly settled into Poland and then it became slowly German and then they became German lands and then eventually this uh, kind of became Pol uh, German. Basically, there's a history of back and forth and stuff and to say it's one country or the other isn't, uh, you know, it's it's kind of unfair. However, after World War II, uh, the, they redrew the borders, you know, the USSR kind of like mediated the whole thing and East Germany accepted it because they were communist, like a, a Soviet satellite state. And, uh, you know, there was some contention of like, should they accept it? Because it pushed the, uh, the border way further back to the West. However, the new border is a lot safer because unlike before where again, pretty much all of their, most of Poland uh, borders have to deal with like, oh yeah, this is on land. We just agree it's there. Uh, now the border between Poland and Germany, even though it's much further West, uh, one, uh, you know, it's, it follows really safe lines. It follows a river, a natural geographic break between the countries, and two, um, because, um, well, first of all, a lot of people fled uh, Poland, but then a lot of people were forcibly uh, expelled, German people, that is, uh, from Poland. Nowadays, these are entirely Polish lands and Polish territories and stuff, so that border 100% makes sense today. I really didn't want to, like, clarify, that, like, some people are like, oh, that's a German nationalist thing to say. And it's like, I'm not German. I don't know how you could assume I was. I'm not, like, advocating for one side or the other on this one. The border as it is right now is the best way to be. So, yeah, while we're also speaking about this border, I... <laughs> I don't know how anyone like took that the other way like oh I guess Toy Cats have a, uh, you know like se secretly advertising for a you know Nazi uprising no that's not the case at all the current border is what makes sense given the current populations because there is now German minorities in, in uh, Poland in the especially in the uh, the westerly parts of it but it, we're talking like tens of thousands versus Poland's population of 40 million which is absurdly high by the way like one of, they're one of the more populated countries in Europe also one of the better performing countries in Europe as of recent so uh, yeah let's talk about the Poland-German border a bit more because first of all it starts up here and 
it's a little bit annoying that like it, you know, it, as you can see, like there's the canal. Uh, this was built by the Prussians. It's not a natural riverway. But like if that would be in the border, then they could have made things easy. Because back when this border was, you know, for, for the longest time until 2004 when Poland joined the EU, the Poland-German uh, border, this thing right here, was one of the most heavily policed borders uh, in Europe. Because obviously it's not only the edge of Germany, but it's the edge of all of the EU and the Schengen area and all those other sorts of things. Uh, which means that obviously like this Polish village was kind of like separated from the rest of Poland by a ferry. I'm just saying it's one of those tiny little things that's like, that's kind of fascinating. Another thing you'll spot because we're talking about Poland today is that the Polish language is a very clear break from the rest of, um, you know, again, from where you get in Western Europe because where you can like easily be like, well, that's New Brandenburg and you're not too far off. It's, I know it's like Neue, but whatever. Anyway, my point being is uh, when you look at Polish, there are some words which get really tricky. Like for instance, one of the close, uh, one of the big cities very close to the German border, which is this one right here. I've heard some Polish people say it. It's something like Sejdin. Um, again, like try and pronounce that. It's really tricky. And then there's even a little town up here called Poli uh, Police, which is actually like Police. Um, but, you know, let's just call it the police because then you can make jokes about, oh, the police. Are, you know, anyway, point being, uh, so there's the border, as you can see. For the very uh, part here, it does follow land borders, but then very quickly it goes onto the Oder because the border between Germany and Poland, the whole controversial thing, but not so much anymore, is called the Oder Nice border. And it's called that because it follows the Oder River all the way down from, set, well, not from a little bit down from south of Sejdin. Uh, it follows the Oder River until the Oda River splits up, uh, splits up into a tributary, and uh, once it does that, the Oda River flows into Poland, whereas the nice, I think it's called a tributary, uh, splits up and goes all the way down Poland, and it follows it all the way to the Czechian border. I'll show you that in a second, but first of all, let me mention that Frankfurt and Oda always gets confused with the other Frankfurt, um, so a fun fact about that, because this is Frankfurt on the Oda, and uh, also is like kind of like, a, it's not quite a city which is split in half by the border, but it is a town where you can just walk across the border. Again, this went from being the most heavily policed border to like, oh yeah, do you want to just cross that place? Guess what? It's as easy as you walk across, just like this. It's very easy. That's construction works, not a border. So you just walk from one side to the other, walk from a Polish town to Germany, go shopping in Poland, get some cheap stuff, then come back to Germany if you want to. It's something that you can actually do, and I find that fascinating. So yeah, we follow the border all the way south um, through the uh, the Nice River, which is again the big dividing line between Poland and Germany. One of the things I really like about this, I mean, it's not that interesting. It shouldn't be that interesting, but it kind of is. Is that they actually have the river? To, uh, sorry, the river is actually the boundary. That's always the defined boundary. So it never gets this issue where like there's German stuff on the Polish side and stuff like that. The the border always stays updated and it always stays relevant to keep the river, you know, to keep the touching distance between the two, which is kind of useful. And you'll see why that is as we go to our next border, because once you follow the nice river all the way south, it eventually meets the border of Czechia, what used to be Ch uh, Czechoslovakia, over here. Again, following the river all the way until it meet, reaches this point right here. So this is their tri point with Germany, Czechia and Poland, you know, the, the three point tri point. And although the actual tri point itself where you have three countries is in the water. You can see how they did something nice here where they've actually got the flag of each of the countries up on each side. So that's the German side of the river. This is the Czechian side of the river. And that is the Polish side of the river because there's rivers separating all three. So they have their own little separate land masses. I thought that was cute personally. And it also means that if you want to, because you know it's there, you could go swim into the very center of these three points and you could go swim in all three countries at once. Or if you're me and you can't swim, you could drown in three separate countries at once. That would be like a, a record or something, right? So yeah, that's something you can find at the Tri point with Czechia, uh, Poland, and uh, Germany right there, which again, kind of interesting if you ask me. So the thing about the Czechia and uh, uh, Poland border is that um, first of all, actually, it leaves this very weird uh, like kind of salient here where, as you can see, Poland is you know only three kilometers wide at this point because um, again, I'll explain the border in a second, but Poland is only three kilometers wide at this point, which means you have this Polish village right here, which means if you live in this Polish village, you are only a five minute drive. Uh, so I'll show you Google Maps in case you you, you know you want to see that like for real. Uh, you're only a five minute drive at any point from getting in. Oh, why is it? Okay, <laughs> I messed this one up entirely. Wait, so let's just, um, but you're only a five minute drive from Czechia, I assure you, as you can see, if we actually like collect, select, select things properly, as you can see, you're only five minutes drive there and you're a 50 minute drive from Germany in the east. So yeah, that means, oh sorry, in the west, which means you can actually be like a 20 minute gap between two separate countries while living in a third country. I think that's kind of a cool little thing you get to experience while living in this random little square of Poland, which is inside, uh, you know, like the gap between the two. Again, scary place to be if you're Poland. But no, uh, the reason the border between uh, Poland and Czechia is so weird and jaggedy and all over the place place is, um, even though it follows the river for a little bit of the border, a lot of the border had to be redrawn just based on like, oh yeah, Czechia wanted the 1920 border, Poland wanted a 1939 border, and they basically kind of just agreed somewhere in the middle based on where populations had moved, because obviously wars are going to change things and they want to go back, but they, they both want things a little bit advantageous, so it means that mostly to this day Polish people live on the Polish side, and that Czechians live on the Czech, uh, that Czechs live on the Czechian side. Uh, can, do you call it the Czech side? Uh, but anyway, the, the Czechs live on the Czech side, which means things are pretty easy. However, 
There is another issue of the border besides the fact that it's really wonky and all over the place. Leaves stuff like this and this and <laughs> you can see the weird stuff that leaves. Uh, however, the other issue they have is that the river border, which they have, a, a, as you can see, following uh, a river, uh, they, they never update the river borders. Um, they have a few of them, if I'm not mistaken. And this means that you uh, have some weird situations where because it follows the old path of the river, again, since they agreed the border like 60, 70 years ago, the river has changed course a little bit. So you end up with like a little bit of Czechia on the Poland side and you end up with a little bit of Poland on the Czechia side. And you see that non-stop whenever there's a river boundary because they don't have one of those updating borders. They kind of just follow the old pathway, which again, it leads to stuff like this, which I find a little bit infuriating. It's not a concern to either side because again, it follows it so marginally far away in places that like no one actually has any settlements that it doesn't actually matter. But still, it's a little bit frustrating, I think. Just just look at this. Like <laughs> it, it follows the border so roughly like, oh, there's some Czechia and Poland side. Then it's Poland on the Czechia side. Then it, <laughs> it just goes back and forth, back and forth. And it's not an issue. Like they don't need to fix it for anything but aesthetic reasons. But you know what? Maybe aesthetic reasons should come into play because I mean, no. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, they have a very, um, they have a very non-updated border. At some point, it'll probably be updated if it gets bad enough or if there's a development near the border, uh, near the river border. But for now, it's just mostly one of these things where it's like, ah, that's fine, we can leave that how it is. Uh, so yeah, that's the Czechia uh, Poland border, and that goes all the way down until you reach, again, with lots of jig jags out and out based on population sizes, stuff like that, until you reach the trade point between P Poland, Czechia, and Slovakia. So this is uh, both one of the more recent trade points in the world, and it's also one of the more friendly ones, I think. So again, there is something there, but it's just like one of those stone monuments where on one side of the stone monument, you're in Poland, and one side you're in... Uh, Slovakia, this side, I believe, and on the one side, you're in Czechia. So, cool little thing there. But yeah, basically, uh, the cool thing about this trade point is that it's between three very friendly countries. Again, Czechia and Slovakia used to be, they even used to be the same country. And, um, you know, Poland, Czechia, and Slovakia, they all are, uh, they have uh, languages which are fairly closely related. Uh, not quite understandable, but like very close. Um, they're all part of the Visegrad group in Europe, so they have like close forms in that form. And basically, my point being is they're all good friends and they've got a tri point border. And because they're all EU countries, all uh, Schengen countries, countries it's just a free border walk from one to the other if you want to and i think that's kind of uh, it, it's a nice little point right so yeah then we follow the poland slovakia border again this changed in 2002 um only like small marginally like by three kilometers because they wanted to even things out but yeah they're, they're they're always regularly checking the border and always doing stuff like this and in 1975 it changed also in a way which i think was kind of a nice thing because basically uh there is a um a power plant along this border they wanted to make a dam or the polish wanted to make a dam and they wanted to make the dam over here but at that time the land was Czechian. Uh, Oh, sorry, that land was Czechoslovakian, uh, which means that because of that, the <laughs> I know the Czechian thing's a mistake I make all the time. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If you're from Czechia, I, I loved I, lo I loved when I went to Prague. It's one of the best cities. There you go. Now it's okay. But let's let's just quickly talk about uh, this because this used to be a part of, the, or at least some of the river used to be a part of um, the Slovakia Poland border. However, they changed it, or Czechoslovakia changed it in 1975, so that Poland can make its dam over here, which is now a power station. So this part of uh, you know Poland is only as recent as 1975. What was that? Like 40 years, 43 years now, 42 years. Basically, this is a very recent part of Poland, and it's just kind of nice that they did that. And this is now like a, a miniature skiing slope over here, so that's even nicer, right? And uh, yeah. This is uh, this is the dam in question. It's not very impressive looking on Google Maps, but if you want to see it, as you can see, here is the Poland dam, and then there is the border between Poland and Slovakia. Again, uh, the border between Poland and Slovakia, by the way, caused some like, but it caused like a tiny bit of controversy. One, I mean, actually, same thing going on here a little bit. But the thing about their border is that um, they, when they first drew it, it left a lot of Slovakians on the Polish side uh, and a few Polish on the Slovakian side. And the Polish agreed to like set up Slovakian schools, like for Slovak language, so they could always do their stuff. However, there just weren't enough Slovak speakers, so they had to shut down all of the schools in the 60s, like a few years later. And I don't know it's just one of those things. It's like they made a really nice compromise and then immediately couldn't follow through on that compromise anymore. And I think that's a, a fascinating little part. But then anyway, we follow that along until we reach the border over here with uh, Ukraine, uh, Slovakia, and Poland. So uh, even though the border is the eastern edge of the EU, uh, the Poland-Ukraine border over here is the very furthest edge of the whole EU. It's the most, uh, or not the furthest edge, sorry, but it's the most uh, used eastern edge of the EU. Uh, there's a lot of border crossings, which we'll get into later. Um, but basically, uh, the border over here is quite fascinating because it just juts out and gives Poland the, like, almost infinitely small piece territory here, which means if you want to, I accidentally pressed... Um, 
Oprah has right click commands. Um, but if you really wanted to, what you could actually do is you could have a, you know, like a, a, it's four meters gap. So you could jump from Ukraine to Slovakia over Poland. Isn't that cool? Isn't that something you want to do? But yeah, because this is realistically a forest, you can't get to that point and it's not marked in any way. Uh, the border's realistically not one you cross. It's one you just go to because it's a nice forest that some people like to go to. So yeah, that is, uh, that is the border point over here. I could show you some of the point for it because there's like a random little, yeah, so there's like a little pathway going through very, very close to it. But you can see how like, that's not a border most people are trying to go for. But if you wanted to, you could go set a fire in three countries at once. Not a good idea. I, all of these things are bad ideas. So uh, yeah, if you followed that along uh, through the east, you have the Poland-Ukraine border. So again, the Poland-Ukraine border has now, as of the revisions, uh, some actually fairly, net, uh, you know, has a river. Again, look at this. Natural boundary also looks like the river path is just, oh no, it's not quite. It, it's, it's very close to the actual borders. Um, and then again, you get to the Polish-Ukraine border. Most used eastern edge border of the EU. And the reason for this, to give you a little bit of a demo demographic demography uh, lesson on Poland. Basically, Poland has a lot of emigration because Poland has the, like, many years of communism, like 45 years of communism over its back. It developed slightly less than the West of Europe. Uh, their average income is something like 70% of this, or average salary is like 70% of the same in the West. And uh, even though that's going up very quickly and they're rebuilding all their networks and stuff like that to make up for that big gap, it does still leave uh, this, er this area where a lot of Polish people, they're well-educated and they speak English, they go overseas. The largest uh, destination is the UK. I I think since 2004, something like a million Polish people in the UK. Polish is now like the second or the third most, most used language in the UK. I see it a lot where I live actually, fun fact. But uh, because of that, a lot of Polish people are leaving to go to the UK. And again, that, let's not talk about the immigration side of things. Let's talk about the demographic sides. But that would usually lead to a shrinking population, you know, high immigration and low-ish birth rates. Uh, however, uh, they have the same situation happening in reverse for them because a lot of Ukrainians go to Poland because since they're developing so fast and 70% of the West is a lot better than uh, Ukraine does, especially with their currency crisis, a lot of Ukrainians cross the border to work in Poland, which means that at the same time that uh, Poland is losing a lot of Poles, it's gaining a lot of Ukrainians. And this leads to the, I think, interesting situation where they're actually managing to just about keep their population stable. It's not shrinking yet. It might do soon. Um, and yeah, it, it also, it's a controversial thing to Polish people, like on both sides. Like uh, their prime minister actually recently recalled, like everyone, if you're Polish, come home, just just come and do that. Which is something uh, you wouldn't ever figure a country would do, but apparently it's a thing that one of the Polish prime ministers did very recently. So yeah, fun little fact. Also, fun fact about the Polish-Ukrainian uh, border is that because the track sizes are different, uh, there's an extra three inches of track, like a gap between the two rails on the Ukrainian side. If you want to take a train from Poland to Ukraine, as well as having to go through a border crossing, so let's say we want to go over here and get to, you know, Lyiv over there. Uh, if you want to take a border crossing on a train, uh, not only is there a border stop, there's always uh, these things, where as you can see, you get out, you have to like, paper checks, all that blah, 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 blah stuff. But also the first station on the Ukrainian side, generally, and it's sometimes a little bit further, but the, usually the first station, they have, I, I didn't believe this was a real thing. They lift up the train off the wheels, they remove the wheels and then put the train on different wheels or like they change the wheels up to make them wider to suit the new track. And that is, that's crazy if you ask me, but that's generally what they have to do to get trains going. It sometimes takes up to hours and uh, that's why getting a train from, you know, across Eastern Europe can be so slow as well as being slower trains. They also have to literally change the wheels when you get into Ukraine, which is a fun fact that you, you may not have been aware of before this. So, uh, yeah, as we also follow the Polish-Ukrainian border, this changed, um, again, fairly recently. If you saw the very original map, like before World War II, a lot of modern-day Ukraine is inside Poland, so fun little thing right there. Uh, they had to agree the borders of the USSR, and uh, I mean, in some cases, it went good for them, uh, like as we'll show later, but that's just a little thing right there. And then also, uh, the village of Medica, I was just there, actually. This village actually was uh, transferred as recently as, like, 1946 uh, from Ukraine to Poland. They just gave it to Poland. It was a nice little gesture, and uh, yeah, it's one of the few uh, places which have been transferred from Ukraine back to Poland. So, there you go, Medica, a, a village that transferred hands very, very recently uh, between Ukraine and Poland. Then we follow the border up, Again, it follows a river for a little bit again until we reach the Ukrainian, Belarusian, um, Belarusian, if you will, um, Polish uh, tri point, which is technically up there, but like I think realistically is in the river. Again, when, when there are situations like this, because the land near the river is really not used by anyone, it doesn't matter where the international boundaries lie. It doesn't affect people's day to day's life. So they just kind of like, I mean, you can't visit this tri point border regardless because Belarus has very strict immigration policies. Ukraine's like air and Poland's obviously the EU. So you, you end up in a weird situation where you're like, well, you can't really visit that one for many reasons. Uh, but then you get the Belarusian and uh, Polish border. So again, they redrew this a few times. Again, 
back and forth and back and forth. At one point, all of Belarus was a part of Poland, as you saw in the previous map. Uh, but it leads to the situation where you actually have uh, towns like this one. So this is the city of, uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce it because some people be like, Toycat, how dare you get the word slightly wrong? But if you, once you get to this city over here, um, you actually end up with a really interesting situation where it's transferred hands so many times back and forth um, that it has name, it has separate names in Russian, it has a separate name in German, has a separate name in Polish, has a separate name in Lithuanian, has a separate name in Belarusian. Basically, it's just the city which has been passed back and forth, and that's what I find fascinating. I live in a town which has always been English, but this town has been Belarusian, it's been Lithuanian, it's been it's been everything for a little bit, and that's something that you might not have been aware of before. So yeah, you follow that along, and uh, same thing with Belarus, by the way, where when you go across it, you have to change the trains, uh, like get off at the border to be border checked. As you can see, they've got the same border point stations on the exact border, and then also they have to take the train off the things and put it on new wheels when they get to the border. Again, wacky stuff. Uh, until you reach the Ukrainian, uh, sorry, the Belarusian and uh, Lithuanian and Polish border over here. Again, easy border, can't visit it. The cool thing about the uh, Lithuanian Polish border is because it's an EU border. It's the only. So if you look at EU member states, Poland, Lithuania, it's the only proper, you know, lifeline or landline or border land uh, between uh, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and the rest of the EU. If it weren't for this little border, if, you know, Russia expanded all the way up there, or Belarus did, uh, all those three states would be cut off from the rest of the EU. But because of that, there's a friendly little uh, land route between every EU country that isn't an island. I think that's kind of cool stuff. Um, and yeah, that's the border. Really easy border, one of the most lax things to go over. Something like 1% of people, though, actually are checked, because obviously, when you're in a part of Europe that has Russia and Belarus, when both countries are NATO, EU allies, you have to be a little bit cautious around the border, which they are. But yeah, relatively friendly border regardless. And then you get to the Russian and Polish border. So what I admire about this border, so there's a lot of reasons why Russia has an exclave in Europe. If you don't know the story, uh, Kaliningrad, also known as Konigsberg, used to be a part of Germany. Again, it's a uh, uh, East Prussia, if I'm not mistaken, you can see how there's a gap uh, between uh, Germany and Poland, and then an exclave of Germany, and then this was uh, Konigsberg, which is now known as Kaliningrad. When the Russians came in, uh, they really wanted a Baltic Sea port, because they have one in St. Petersburg, but it freezes over in the winter sometimes, most years, in fact. Um, so they wanted a Baltic Sea port so they could control their influence here. So they just kind of took this land as theirs. And back when the USSR existed, it was all the same country, so it didn't matter. But now they have an exclave, which um, it's, I, I think that's weird and fascinating. Uh, but yeah, it's an exclave which used to be German, but now no Germans live there. They were all expelled and forced from their home and had to flee. It's one of those like weird, I guess, terrifying things in history when you look at it. But yeah, Kaliningrad, that is a place that exists over here, and it's a little bit of an exclave of Russia. The border's Poland directly. So yeah, again, very heavily policed border, for the most part. Also very straight border. It's mostly a straight line, which, I mean... I know straight line borders aren't usually a good thing, but in this case, it's just what they did because they had to agree on it. But then interesting enough, it goes all the way to a Polish beach resort, which means that from a Polish, uh, you know, a pretty popular Polish beach just over here, if you just go a little bit to the east and you can see there's a, like a few people that actually have, if you go a little bit to the east of that, so here is the beach, then you end up in, in Russia all of a sudden. And I don't know, to me, that's just, <laughs> that's just kind of weird. Like you've got this beautiful beach and then you got Russia over there somewhere and uh, that's a thing you can get. Also, there's actually someone, um, if you go into a second photosphere, someone was like, oh, there's a point where if you go over it, you end up in Russia. So he put his little selfie stick over into Russia, took a 360 picture, you, oh, like over the fence at least. I think that's an interesting idea. And that's a thing that you can do in the Polish little beach on this little connection between Poland and Russia. So yeah, with that said, I just wanted to end today's video by talking a little bit about the sea border because Gdansk is uh, one of these things that causes the, every time I talk about a city with a historically different name, people are like, no, it's that old name. And Gdansk actually gets some people saying, no, it's Danzig because for most of its history, it had a German majority. And in German to this day, it's still called Danzig. Uh, and yeah, it was known as the free city of Danzig. Uh, there was a lot of controversy here, a lot of the lead up to World War II. And also fascinatingly, uh, one of Poland's prime ministers and now the EU commissioner, I mean, they, they all have similar names, EU president, EU commissioner, EU man in charge of lots of things is actually from this city, Danzig or Gdansk. So there you go. It's also just a really big, really populous port city, uh, Poland's biggest port and just a really important city for trade in Europe. And uh, yeah, it's Gdansk or Danzig. You can call it whichever one you want. You know what? No one's going to stop you calling things what you want it. You can call it, you know, police if you want to. I'm, I'm not going to stop you. No, one, no one's going to care. Problem. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they do. But yeah, with that said, that is kind of, uh, those are all of Polish, Poland's borders. They're pretty easy ones to go over in comparison to like uh, some other stuff. But the reason they're changing so much and the reason if I didn't go over this properly before is because it's a flat plane, they're so likely 
to change again if there's ever a war. When a war happens, it's really easy to just like take a little bit over, you know? That's that's how this city just like went back and then went forth and then oh it's up there and up stuff. Basically, uh, Poland having a lack of natural land borders meant there was really easy to be invaded, but the fact that a Poland has always risen out of the ashes and now is again they have 40 million people living there. They're one of the fastest growing countries in the EU. They have all these like strong things going for them. It's something you have to give them credit for. Like I'll, I'll be honest, way before I knew, like when I just had vaguely understood that Poland was Eastern Europe, I was like, ah, so it must be one of those poor parts of Europe. But it's, the truth is far from that. They have a deep, rich history and it just it just so happens that some of their history includes being literally you know ju you know two countries i think it's austria and russia just agreed like let's just eat poland together let's just each have half and that ha that's happened multiple times including world war ii basically when you're in a when you're in a tricky situation they did the best the tricky situation and they've done a pretty good job for most of their stuff also um i have been to poland and i have some zloty currency and they're one of the interesting eu members that are resisting the euro in this backwards way so there's another fun fact that's not geography but i find fascinating about poland and about i guess the the polish terror uh, anyway thank you very much for watching this video hope you all enjoyed it in some way uh if you want to see more borders videos let me know uh, in the comments because I, I the one i'm considering doing um like I, I kind of want to talk a little bit about Singapore, but it's not really borders. But there's a lot, there's a lot, uh, and also India is the one where I'm like, oh, I guess we should get into that sometime because here's the fun, here's the fun luring fact for another video maybe. Jammu and Kashmir, which is one of the weirdest Indian provinces because it has look at its borders because they're so controversial. There's just 50 versions, but Jammu and Kashmir has two capitals: a capital for the summer and a capital for the winter. Isn't that good? Interesting, cool stuff. I think it is. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Second channel. Uh, no wait, check out my, um, my own sponsor link, uh, ibxtoycat.amazon.com or amazon.com slash ibxtoycat slash store. There's gonna be a link down below if you want to get any of my setup. I know my setup's mostly for gaming, there's like Xbox stuff here, but if you want to see anything or get this microphone or whatever, I've linked that down below. And also, I'm going to Singapore, so if you live in Singapore, like, I don't know, send me an email at ibx2cat at gmail.com or leave a comment and just let me know cool stuff in Singapore, or if you want to meet and tell me cool geography facts, uh, I met a couple of people in Czechia actually and uh, that happened so if you want to meet me in Singapore and you don't want to murder me let me know in the comments down below but yeah thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time second channel don't care bye